So thanks, Ellie, and um, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Hugh Davis. I'm uh, one of the founding team at Ozone API, and really thrilled to be here today and joining you. Um, open banking is without doubt a global phenomenon now, whether it's open banking, open finance, consumer directed finance, it's, it's happening around the world. And really thrilled today to be um, hosting what will hopefully be a really interesting conversation, exploring um, how this is playing out around the world. So what are some of the, the similarities, some of the differences, some of the, the challenges and opportunities as we look at the uh, implementation of open banking in, in different markets and regions. Um, we've got some fantastic speakers with us today. Uh, so I am really pleased to uh, be joined by uh, a couple of guys I have known and worked with for a very long time, um, Tiago and Abdullah. I, I won't try and do the job for you, so I'll perhaps ask you each to introduce yourselves sort of very briefly in terms of uh, what you do, your focus and, and where you guys operate, and then we can get into the conversation from there. Um, Abdullah, do you want to start? Sure. Thanks for having us, first of all, Hugh. Always a pleasure. Um, Abdullah Al Moyed, I'm the founder and CEO of Tarabit Gateway, an open API platform that supports banks in the MENA region. The MENA region is predominantly 18 countries, um, the Middle East and North Africa is where we're focused. Open banking is starting to move pretty aggressively. We started three years ago and we're starting to see kind of the fruits of our labor. And it, there are interesting case studies being late adopters, which I'll be more than happy to discuss as we progress. Tiago, over to you. Thank you, Abdullah. All right. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, Hugh, Abdullah. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure. Well, my name is Tiago. Uh, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm a superintendent in a, in a company called Tecba in Brazil. Tecba is the major ATM deployer in Brazil. We are uh, number one ATM deployer in the world in terms of uh, volumes of transactions. And I'm the head of uh, open banking in, uh, in Tecma. So I work with uh, digital innovation, uh, new platforms, and uh, all sort of uh, new businesses here. So that's uh, I'm in charge of. So, and I've been working with open banking for the last three years. That's a uh, way to be here. Fantastic. Well, we'll, we'll thank you. Um, hopefully we, we'll, we'll have a great conversation. We'll probably sort of cover areas such as how open banking is developing in in, in our respective different regions, what are some of the learnings and considerations, and and really looking forward how how this may um, may play out. And just a tiny bit of background on myself. I, I mentioned um, I'm a founder at um, at Ozone. I also spent some time um, helping to to drive the implementation of open banking in the UK. And, and perhaps let's start with a bit of a view of of how open banking is rolling out in 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 the different markets and geographies. Uh, Tiago, perhaps if I start with you in Brazil, you're you're right in the eye of the storm with a with a huge open finance um, agenda and, and and regulation rolling out right as we speak with some 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 very aggressive timescales and and lofty ambitions. Could you tell us a little bit about what's happening in in the market? Kind of what's intended? Where are we up to? Kind of what are you seeing? It'd be great to hear more about the the Brazilian yeah. landscape. Yeah, sure. Uh, everybody, <laughs> Brazil is an uh, exciting moment now, 2021, and uh, and uh, I think everything is happening in the same years. <laughs> We've been working a lot because uh, not only open banking is going on. We now we have open insurance also, uh, so data about insurance companies uh, also being uh, have they have to be they are going to be regulated and uh, by the end of the year, we have instant payment also at the same time. So. Uh, that's a lot of work, but uh, in terms of open banking, of course, all of all of those you know uh, talks and public consultations they started like two years ago, but then the central bank is really putting forward you know uh, an aggressive agenda. So right now, uh, open banking here in Brazil we have we're split it in four different phases. So like uh, public public data uh, phase one that was already implemented in uh, February this year, and then. Uh, uh, by June this year, August this year, uh, we have uh, data from you know transactions and, and uh, also um, um, names of persons, you know those uh, public uh, registry 
also going also happen to be to be public uh, uh, through the, the the open banking, and now the third phase that we are moving towards uh, by the end of October is where open banking uh, starts the, the the payment initiation services. So everything is happening and moving really fast, and uh, and the open banking here in Brazil, the landscape it's really huge. So we have uh, more or less uh, one thousand two hundred institutions that are coming together in open banking. Open banking is only obliged, uh, it's mandatory to for the 13 biggest banks, but everybody else, you know, uh, payment institutions and financial institutions, they are also coming on board. So everybody saw that this is a really uh, huge opportunity, really, you know, revolutionary in terms of uh, financial system. So everybody's trying to, to be uh, in compliance with the central bank regulation. And what, one um, further question, if I may, what um, the, the, the regulator has got obviously some clear objectives in mind for, for driving open banking. What do you think are the, the outcomes they're looking for um, from implementing open banking in this way? Yeah, well, innovation, of course, you know, first uh, to innovate uh, the, the banks in, in terms of, you know, getting the challenging banks, you know, new banks, digital banks uh, to come in and have the same uh, level of uh, play field, you know, so they can compete at the same level. Uh, so they're forcing innovation. I think that's the first increased competition. So in Brazil, we have five biggest banks they own more than eight, between 80, 90% of the market in terms of uh, credit and uh, also in terms of accounts. And another also financial inclusion. So we have in Brazil more or less 40 million people that are that don't have any bank account. Also we have plus maybe 40 million other people that they do have a bank account, but they kind of underbank it because they just use it to, to receive something and they withdraw that. So if you get, fintechs together with uh, financial institutions and come with some really interesting services and a value proposition, then we would have more credit spread out. So I think that's the, the, the three main goal that the central bank is trying to achieve. Fantastic. And there's some crazy numbers in terms of the size of the market and the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, Abdullah, turning to you and the, the, the MENA region, I mean, you, you talked already about 18 different markets. It's a, it's a complex and fragmented region with a with a lot of different sort of circumstances and scenarios it'd be great to hear a little about how open banking's playing out in the region what are you seeing i think by comparison you it's what we're seeing is is very fast movement um what we're seeing is a leapfrog of a generation of technology in my opinion um what's also happening and, and that's interesting is in some cases it's regulator led but I think that the most exciting part of this ecosystem out in MENA is that the banks are the ones driving it. Um, and I think the, the dynamics of the market do play a role here as far as not so much legacy infrastructure, not so much proprietary technology, which allows really for fintechs to be able to, um, well, for banks to be able to use software providers or third parties to really leapfrog and build things um, that are learning from other economies. I think the other thing that is super interesting is the pace in which uh, mandates are happening. You've got markets like Saudi Arabia that have just mandated, knowing by the second half of 2022, all banks must be compliant. You've got places like Bahrain where they've been able to adopt open banking regulations, at least version one, which are at par with the UK open banking standards in a period of something like six months, right? So I think the banks are the driving force out here. The banks are the ones that are looking to also consume these APIs, which makes it very interesting. Um, dynamics are a little different. Yes, it's fragmented, but you also have modern um, payment rails in every one of these jurisdictions, which also creates another interesting place. Um, I think Cloud is very interesting as well because you've got a lot of interoperability that's possible. A lot of people and a lot of companies and banks have moved into the cloud already, which gives you another proposition altogether. Uh, personally, I think it's one of the most exciting regions in the world just because of the mandates that are coming out. FinTech is the number one agenda, whether it's in Egypt, Jordan, 
Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain, which ultimately results in kind of open APIs and open data being the future. So we see movements alongside open data, data governance policies, data privacy policies, but also one thing that I think is, is absolutely crucial, which is um, electronic signature laws which are also something else that comes into play, which can really accelerate what you can do with open banking. Um, yeah, so definitely very excited about what's going on here. And I think just like Brazil, things are happening very fast. Actually, that's a really interesting area. We'll come back to that later about sort of digital signatures and, and the opportunity around identity. Um, and it is, it's, um, I mean, it's a fascinating region, right? Because it's, it's big, um, it's complex, right? There's a, there's a huge amount of, opportunity it's very interconnected in some ways but there's an opportunity for for an awful lot more I, w one thing i was reflecting on as you both talked um there's it, it's around the pace of the change but also I, I think the way the banks are sort of embracing if i think back to the the, the journey in the uk and, and europe and it's been a it's been a, a a long journey over the last four years but i think we're at a point now in the uk where there's there's some really significant adoption of, um, of, of open banking. There's nearly 900 million API calls a month happening across the big banks. There's millions of users using it as part of their everyday life, but it was quite a long slog. And I would reflect that at the beginning, actually, probably a lot of the banks were seeing it as um, something to fear. So a complex regulatory requirement and maybe a risk of being disintermediated by all these brand new fintechs, whereas the reality is it's spawned loads of partnerships and innovation and the banks have been really grabbing hold of this. It sounds like you, you guys are seeing the banks viewing this very differently in the region and, and, and grabbing hold of it and moving more quickly. I, I mean, Abdullah, what do, you, what do you think on that point? I think that what, I mean, you and I have known each other for, for quite a few years and we saw the open banking develop. I think when when it was happening in the UK, banks tried to, well, started dragging their feet because they looked at it as a compliance project. And I think what's happening in the Middle East is it's use case driven, is yes, we'll build the infrastructure, but how do we become consumers and utilizers of third party APIs that are out there? So accounts aggregation has become table stakes. Data enrichment is something that, I think this is where it gets interesting. And, and the benefits are, Let's look at how other banks globally reacted. You hear some, some great use cases that are coming up. How do we monetize APIs and go premium APIs from day one above and beyond the, the standards? How do we differentiate? These are all the conversations that are going on right now. So it's, I think any bank today, regardless of geography, that, that starts look, looking at it from a compliance perspective, is still considered non-strategic, right? So it's a question of what do I want to do with these APIs three years down the line? How do I build the required infrastructure from now? And that's really the conversations that we're having. We're seeing some great stuff happening in Saudi Arabia. We're seeing some great stuff happening in the UAE. Prerequisite infrastructure is table stakes. Everyone within the next few years is going to have open banking standard APIs. The question is, the use cases, how do they go and monetize and become and go way above and beyond. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing conversations that don't start with compliance anymore. Compliance is a side project and RFP is out. Let's just go out. But it's more strategic. What can you guys do for us as the conversations we've been having with banks? What can you guys do for us? How do we partner? How can we leverage your platform, your data enrichment, your payments initiation to build out better propositions for ourselves, which is a great space for existing banks to be at, right? So it's not no longer about competition, it's about partnerships, it's about APIs to deliver this kind of ecosystem play between all these various players. Yeah, I I, I think it is really interesting. I've seen a, a very different attitude shift. One over time and in each different sort of geography or jurisdiction where this is happening. I mean, Tiago, we've been working together for a while now as well, and you're, you're, you're helping the banks on this journey to implement their open banking APIs. What are you seeing and hearing from the banks? Are they are they seeing this as a compliance exercise they just need to get out of the way? Or are you having much more strategic conversations with them around what this sort of um, channel allows them to do? Yeah, well, it's been it's been uh, an interesting journey. You know, all happens 
like it's a human behavior, right? So uh, everybody is in denial at first <laughs> when something something new comes, and then they have to accept it, and then uh, they start seeing opportunity. I don't know in, in which phase of the, this curve we are now. Maybe you know they already accepted. <laughs> so, uh, but but we have you know really you know huge banks, and then we have credit unions. Um, I've been talking to credit unions that I've never heard of before. So Brazil is really big. And uh, then you have like credit unions, you know, northeast of Brazil, you know, uh, you know, southeast. So it's interesting, you know, small cities uh, with, you know, agriculture credit unions. So and everybody at first, you know, uh, development banks, also public development bank, banks uh, uh, I've talked to. So I talked to more than 100 banks here already. And uh, each one of them, they are in, in different uh, levels, you know, a lot of them, they haven't, you know, digitalized, so they have to automate, they have to do the, the digital transformation. They still have a lot of legacy. So uh, uh, for each one of them, they are in, in one stage. But um, it what we've been seeing from the big banks uh, at first, you know, at least in the papers, everybody was complaining about open banking and, you know, saying that not fair because that's my, my data, you know, my clients and now, and uh, it's the same thing that happened with uh, instant payment. That's the beauty of competition because when, you know, the competition is out, you know, everybody start moving and then the other ones start moving also. So with instant payment here in Brazil, which is called PIX, and that's uh, live since uh, November, uh, the end of November last year. And uh, everybody was saying, you know, it's going to uh, take some some uh, revenue out from, from the banks because they, they do, they, they charge a lot when you do a transfer, right? Um, but then the first bank was sent on that here in Brazil. Uh, it started a campaign, a marketing com campaign saying, you know, calling the clients to register with them their instant payment you know, their, their key. So you would have, you know, your ID or your cell phone number. And this campaign led to the campaign with of the other bank. And then everybody starts starting to compete. So with open banking, it's happening the same. They're now, uh, they had uh, this uh, marketing campaign saying, you know, register with my open banking. Even though people don't have to register in the open bank, there's no place to register. You know, you just have to, when, when you want to share your data, then you're gonna to have to, you can share, but there's no prerequisite to register before. So, but now all the banks are doing that. So it's it's really interesting to, to see and, and, and to understand. We're, we're just starting. So uh, TechBud has been working with that, you know, uh, and with Ozone also since, uh, you know, 2019, 2020. And we've been talking to the banks, helping the banks to expose their APIs in, in the regulated form. And it was just compliance, right? And then uh, a lot of banks, they are trying to do themselves. So we have now some banks coming back and saying, maybe it wasn't that easy of a job. <laughs> so now we want to talk to you again. And also we're now seeing some banks trying to understand what's next. So how do I consume data? What can I offer my clients? But that's just, you know, the beginning of it. You know, there's still um, maybe, uh, they're still trying to understand what what are the opportunities, where are the opportunities? And, uh, but one thing that's uh, missing here in Brazil that I'm, I'm always complaining, different from the UK, the fintechs, they can be part of the open banking, like in the UK. So you, you can be a TPP, you register, you do all the certification, OBIE and, and all the things that you can explain much better than me. Uh, but here in Brazil, it's only for regulated uh, institutions by the central bank. You can partner with uh, like a bilateral uh, agreement with a bank, if you are a fintech, but there's no um, account information, you know, AISP type of, uh, of, um, of institution. And I think that's uh, lead us, you know, maybe we're gonna take some time to see really uh, interesting propositions coming coming live. So that's one thing that, uh, that I have, I, I hope to see that change in the future. Yeah, it's, it, it, that is one of the very interesting differences, actually. I think in Europe, we've seen a huge number of new regulated third parties and fintechs enter the market. There's kind of, I think, well over 500 now. Um, really vibrant marketplace. And, and actually, there have been a huge amount of partnerships between those 
those providers and the banks so the banks can start connecting to other banks and building their open banking propositions and and and, and doing more together um you you talked around payments and uh, and we've talked in the conversation a little bit around sort of some of the premium apis and, and where banks might take it next um i'm really interested to get your views i mean I, I, I think in uk and europe yeah we're seeing banks they've been connecting to other banks to build propositions to help lending and financial management they're also starting to think about delivering premium apis in areas like um uh, payments and we're now seeing significant payment volumes start to build um wh where do you think the banks are going to go with this in 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 your region as as the 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 more advanced ones that are more progressive in their thinking what what are the things that you think they're going to be doing over the next sort of 12 18 24 months so i think first of all to start off with i think to go back to tiago's point we haven't i don't remember having a single conversation with a bank out in the MENA region that starts and ends with compliance. It always starts with, yeah, let's put this aside right now. Tell me about the exciting stuff. Tell me about what we can do moving forward. Tell me about accounts aggregation, data enrichment, payments initiation. Yes, I'll bundle up and, and create some interesting propositions. Tell me how I can make money out of this is typically how, or how I can elevate customer experience. That's very different to the dynamic that you and I both saw and went through out in the UK when we started looking at the banks dragging their feet, talking about the API standard. So that's, that's table stakes. I think when you look at the most exciting things that everybody around the world is talking about today, which is variable recurring payments, sweeping payments, all this fun stuff that we're talking about, it, it's coming as version one in certain geographies. Right, because they don't need to launch version one and then update. And if you've got the consent management embedded and if you've got the right APIs and a willing bank that is looking to monetize, I'm personally very excited about that. And I think that the mindset between or the differentiation between the compliance project and the strategic outlook towards open APIs has become something that is accepted from day one within forward-thinking financial institutions. They realize that open banking or open APIs is a necessity, consider it a business unit, it needs to have its own strategy and roadmap. How do we now start doing two things? One is monetization of these premium APIs, let's start investing in infrastructure. And the other side of it is, is let's elevate our customer experience. And if we're going to, if we've got a digital proposition out there and we'd like to elevate the customer experience why don't we use third-party applications or widgets or or, or third-party microservices that we can embed into our existing application and i think that's where it's getting very interesting is we're starting to take open banking was driven it was was primarily driven by the competitive markets authority right so we're, we're talking about people that are trying to introduce competition out in the mina region it's more alongside how do we build partnerships and elevate, and the banks are the ones driving it. The banks are the ones that are looking for use cases that they can implement into their existing applications. So I think it's potentially less about competition, more about driving new use cases, new monetization strategies, and ultimately a better customer experience is what the regulators are after. Yeah, I, I, I agree, and I, I think, um... I mean, one of the things that we have seen in the UK, we've seen a massive shift in the way banks are approaching this. And I think all of the the the, the, the forward thinking banks have got full structures looking at, yeah, how do they leverage access to other banks, but how do they also expose richer functionality that can be built on by third parties and partners or could potentially be commercialized. And I, I think the attitudes changed so much. And payments is, as you mentioned, with variable recurring payments, one of the interesting areas that Tiago, you've, you've talked about how kind of this has been aligned with the rollout of instant payments and, and, and picks. I mean, how big do you think the payment opportunity is in, um, in Brazil, given all of the, 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 the sort of objectives and the, the, the scale of the challenge that you talked about earlier? How, how big is that payment opportunity? Well, if we get the data from Bix, so Bix uh, was uh, started so December, so 
by the end of November. And I think none of the projections that the central bank did uh, were were real because they, they they underestimated. You know, people just jumped in picks and everybody's using it. So you you just uh, use everywhere now, and you know, billions and billions of transactions. So it's huge, huge because. Uh, of course, it it, it, uh, it solves some problems. You know, of course, when you solve some problems uh, from the, the user, then you have a, and, and you have a great experience. Uh, so, for, especially for small payments, you know, transfers and and it's free. So you don't have to pay the charge that the banks used to pay used to charge for the tariffs tariff that they charge for for transfers. Um, so. We have to find out which use case or uh, what are the problems that open banking will solve if you get uh, the payment initiation. Um, so the payment initiation instant uh, in, in Brazil for open banking, we have you know like wire transfer, then we have uh, instant payment, and then we have uh, debit, direct debit in, in the account of the user, and. The, in, that's the third phase of open banking, and that has been broken down in four different phases. So we're going to reach the full scope of uh, instant payment or payment initiation in Brazil only in uh, March next year. So um, I think then we're going to see some, some real use cases. So people that want to buy in e-commerce, people that want to pay you know, bill payments and uh, all the other things. Uh, and if you go to a retail store, then then you can you know, just uh, debit your account uh, and not using a, a credit card. So uh, let's find out. Uh, I think it, payment really uh, helps con- uh, a user journey and solves a problem. So let's find out what the what are the problems that the open banking sharing data. Uh, will help you know the the, the the customer. So let's see. Fantastic, thank you. And I, I guess we're, we're we're sort of getting towards the end of the session now. So I'll, I'll perhaps ask you each uh, um, a forward-looking question. You can choose to answer this in in, in the way you think is most appropriate. But um, I mean, this is typically it's a it's a multi-year journey. It's a major sort of industry industry shift. Um, and where do you think? you'll be or where do you hope you'll be in 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 your um sort of markets within within the next couple of years um abdullah perhaps if i start with you so i'll I'll align where we want to be alongside where i'd like to see the market go at at tg we've decided we're, we're very bank aligned so we work with financial institutions to support them on these strategies and really build products for the banks to be able to leverage data sciences. And number two is to be able to monetize these APIs and generate income. And I think what I'd like to see moving forward is us being able to number one, personalize financial services, support these banks on creating for personalized financial services. And the second thing is, is really a lot of monetization of APIs is how do you turn these cost centers into profit centers for the banks? out there and i think we're, we're we're getting there we're getting there and i think that that is what i'd like to see is i'd like to see our partner banks become successful because of not only the infrastructure but the products that we've given them built on top of their exposed apis which is where the MENA region and i personally think that i mean fast forward another 12 months then we'll be doing things that i think are at par if not ahead of the rest of the world here in the MENA region Oh, thanks, Abdullah. Um, yeah, Java, up to you. Yeah, well, I have you know two different uh, views. Of course, my personal view. I hope you know the open banking can help as many people as uh, as it's possible because Brazil still have a lot to grow. So, still poor country. A lot of people don't have credit to buy you know uh, their uh, refrigerator, their houses, and things like that. So, like Abdullah said, you know, personalize so they can have a better uh, interest rate. And middle class and everybody, so that's uh, that's what I'm looking for in terms of techbo. So I hope we can uh, go beyond. That's what we're doing now. Going go beyond compliance, going beyond uh, being helping banks to to explore open banking just in the regulation, being compliance, but now also getting them to consume data and create different uh, type of uh, value proposition. So to be you know a, a more robust platform 
so we can be you know uh, plug and play uh, and uh, one one place that you go and and you you are good to go in open banking so fantastic well thank you gentlemen it's always kind of wonderful to to, to talk to you guys i mean genuine sort of visionaries and, and leaders in the markets that you operate in. I, I think it's been an interesting conversation. I'm never sure the way that these things will go. I, really um, kind of inspiring and interesting that it has been so focused on how big an opportunity this is for the, the banks and the financial services players. I, I, I've certainly seen that. I think um, investment in this infrastructure to provide kind of secure standards-based interfaces with a consent-based model that, that really gives customers great experiences and uh, an opportunity for, for the whole ecosystem to, to, to drive new, new propositions. Um, we didn't get to talk about the identity bit as the, the hook, but I'm sure we can come back to that in another conversation. But thank you, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Um, so Ellie, back over to you, thank you.